Hello everyone, I welcome you all for today's class. I hope that you got the opportunity to go through the last class that where I discussed some aspects of asymmetric epoxidation. So we will briefly look at what we did in the last class and then proceed further for other aspects of asymmetric reactions. Uh, last time we discussed the Sharpless epoxidation and as I told you that if uh, we have an allylic alcohol which is uh, a prochiral molecule and then uh, we uh, can epoxidize that using a protocol developed by Sharpless namely that it involves tertiary butyl hydroperoxide, titanium isopropoxide and uh, of course uh, molecular sieves to remove water or isopropanol and uh, the main uh, reagent that is required which guides the enantioselectivity is uh, diethyl tartarate optically active formed. Uh, if we take L plus DET and orient the uh, allylic alcohol in this fashion where we have the double bond uh, like a vertically oriented and then on the right hand side on from the lower part of it we have the CH2OH like this. Then of course uh, the L plus DET allows the epoxidation to take place from the alpha side as you can see it here. On the other hand uh, if we uh, take uh, D minus diethyl tartarate then of course we get the epoxidation from the beta side and we uh, discussed in detail how the mechanism allows the uh, formation of these epoxides in a highly uh, stereoselective fashion and obviously uh, they give enantiomerically pure epoxide. And uh, we also looked at um, how uh, if we start with a molecule that contains an asymmetric center and uh, of course uh, we can resolve them in a kinetic fashion. So uh, I have shown here the mechanism which uh, I need not emphasize too much but just uh, to uh, as a recap as you can see that the tertiary brittle hydroperoxide attaches uh, from the equatorial side first to the titanium and then it has a choice to attach the tertiary brittle oxy uh, uh, this particular moiety to the titanium from the lower side or from the top side. But since in the dimeric species we have the ester moiety here which is beta oriented and therefore the um, titanium oxygen tertiary butyl bond formation occurs from the alpha side. And that decides the, that the allylic alcohol attaches from the beta side and therefore epoxidation occurs to the double bond which is uh, oriented in this fashion from the alpha side and that leads to the formation of the product like this and which can be written up by simply rotation in the plane of the paper to give this particular product. And exactly opposite of that occurs when we take the D minus DET and of course we get the product like this because the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide now attacks, attaches from the top side that means once the titanium oxygen bond of tertiary butyl hydroperoxide has taken place from the equatorial side, the other oxygen and tertiary butyl uh, that particular bond, the oxygen uh, the attachment takes place opposite side to uh, the, the, um, the side from where the allyl alcohol will attach. And that of course as I mentioned depends upon the ester group of the dimeric species. And in this particular case when we are dealing with D minus diethyl tartarate, the tertiary butyl O bond attachment occurs from the top and therefore the allylic alcohol attaches from the alpha side and therefore the uh, ox oxidation occurs from the beta side like this which leads to the formation of this particular epoxy alcohol which is exactly opposite from the, uh, the product that we have got from L plus DT. 
Now we come to the kinetic resolution part, we need not spend much time, we already have seen that if we take L plus dt for example, L plus dt as the uh, tartarate uh, ester, then uh, of course the uh, two racemic molecules which are here, they are because of the uh, group R1, uh, they exist in, in racemic form and we are taking a racemic molecule and then we are trying to react it with L plus DT and of course titanium isopropoxide and tertiary butyl hydroperoxide, the one in which the R1 group is away from the ester group in the transition state that gets epoxidized faster and therefore uh, we get this particular epoxy alcohol and this particular allylic alcohol remains unreacted. So uh, this is how we can do the kinetic resolution as I mentioned earlier that uh, if we allow the reaction to go for a longer time then of course uh, the both the allylic alcohols will get epoxidized. So that is the reason why it is called as a kinetic resolution because it all depends upon which uh, allylic alcohol reacts faster. We also looked at uh, the uh, utility of the epoxides uh, uh, basically via the epoxide ring opening. Now if we can look at the epoxy alcohol, we see there are three uh, sites where the uh, nucleophile can attack uh, uh, that is carbon number 1, carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 and we looked at all the possibilities including the pain rearrangement uh, where we could transpose the internal epoxide into a terminal epoxide and then the reaction easily occurs at the terminal end of the epoxide because that is sterically less hindered and therefore the SN2 reaction takes place as I have shown it here. So if we start with this epoxy alcohol under the base condition, basic conditions here OH minus uh, water tertiary butanol medium, we get the epoxide which is the terminal one and then the nucleophile in this particular case will be OH minus but any other nucleophile we discussed like thiols or amine then they can attack onto this end of the um, epoxide and form this particular uh, diol with a nucleophile being there at the terminal end of the epoxide and eventually we get this product. So like, like this um, one can easily uh, transform the uh, epoxy alcohol which is uh, almost 100% optically pure into a large number of different types of molecules which are highly functionalized molecules. Now so far we discussed the uh, epoxidation of uh, allylic alcohol. So in the, in the uh, epoxidation uh, using sharp test conditions the requirement was that allylic alcohol is a must. That means the uh, OH group has to be at the allylic position and very close to the double bond. It has been found that they also have studied the epoxy uh, epoxidation of homoallylic alcohol, but of course the epoxidation uh, drops down because the uh, attachment to uh, the titanium of this OH group uh, allows uh, uh, the uh, transfer of the oxygen from tertiary butyl hydroperoxide on a double bond which is one more carbon away from the allylic alcohol. So the possibility of uh, high uh, stereoselectivity is uh, somewhat less. Uh, worst is uh, or even more difficult is, is uh, epoxidation of uh, such kind of olefins which are not functionalized and uh, how to carry out epoxidation to give the uh, epoxide either this or this, they are basically enantiomers of each other. Now in this respect uh, Katsuki uh, uh, and Jacobson have uh, uh, almost the same time developed method uh, of epoxidation of these olefins uh, using uh, chiral uh, selen complexes. This is a chiral selen complex. Of course these kind of complexes were originally uh, described uh, by uh, Kochi, uh, however uh, the asymmetric version has now been uh, developed by Katsuki and Jacobson. So um, as you can see it here, you, we have uh, the saline complex in which 
if you look at the this particular part on the uh, aromatic part here this is basically a salicyl dehyde derivative and uh, if we look at the upper part that is this particular part here uh, this particular part comes from the C2 symmetry based uh, uh, chiral amine. So, what we have here is um, here you have NH2 and here also you have an NH2 and of course you have hydrogen here which is beta and the hydrogen here is alpha. So, you have a C2 symmetry basically. So, such C2 symmetry based um, uh, 1, 2 diamines also have been utilized to prepare such a complex and this complex uh, then uh, uh, when it is present uh, having a manganese at the uh, core then of course the uh, oxo manganese uh, complex allows the oxidation to take place. We will study the mechanistic aspects uh, in detail. Now how do we make this kind of uh, saline complex? Or and how do we incorporate the metal manganese into it. First of all we, we start with this uh, C2 symmetric base diamine and we take the tertiary butanol and as I have written here we mix them together in the presence of potassium carbonate and of course water ethanol. We remove uh, basically it allows the condensation to take place and we get this particular uh, molecule. As you can see two uh, molecules of salicylaldehyde derivative have reacted with the primary amine and of course we got the imine com, uh, imino molecule which upon reaction with manganese triacetate at 80 degrees in the presence of uh, sodium chloride we get here manganese 3 and uh, such a complex is formed which can now be oxidized to the corresponding uh, oxo complex here uh, using an oxidant such as sodium hypochlorite or uh, iodoso benzene um, uh, as oxidant and of course this exists in the manganese 5 form. Now this is the one that is utilized for the epoxidation uh, of olefins which are unfunctionalized. Now how do we get this particular uh, molecule here? There are several methods that have been developed in the recent past but one of the oldest ones is that we can start with a racemic uh, molecule of course it has to be a trans oriented but then it would be a mixture of uh, this and uh, the it is enantiomer so we have mixture of these and this. So, this is how it is here. Uh, I have not shown any stereochemistry here, but we, exp we mean that this is going to be a, a mixture of these two enantiomers as a racemic molecule. And when this is treated with uh, tartaric acid, which is an optically active uh, diacid that allows the resolution to take place and uh, we get of course one of them coming out as a crystal which we can um, uh, recrystallize and separate out and then we can uh, kind of basify it in order to release the corresponding uh, free amine and that is what is utilized here. But then there are several methods which can be employed to get to this particular 1 to diamine. Now uh, how do we get uh, the corresponding aldehyde? This is a uh, little bit of a little difficult aldehyde or salicylaldehyde to get it. But one of the ways by which we can introduce the aldehyde group into an aromatic molecule is by reacting the aromatic moiety with hexamethylene tetramine. So hexamethyl tetramine has this cyclic structure as you can see there are 4 nitrogens and 6 uh, methylene uh, groups which are present. When the uh, phenol which is uh, already uh, substituted at the proper position is allowed to react with this hexamethylene tetramine uh, 
uh, in the presence of acetic acid at 130 degrees followed by of course hydrolysis using sulfuric acid at 100 degrees we get the corresponding aldehyde. Now uh, what exactly is the mechanism and how does this act as a source of uh, formyl group is something that is shown here. If we take this uh, hexamethylene tetramine and it gets protonated, uh, it can get protonated at any position but we are writing it here on the top. So we protonate this and we form this uh, ammonium ion and then we have this uh, pair of electrons here which allow the opening of the particular carbon nitrogen bond which is next to the ammonium ion. And then you generate this particular species in which now we have this electrophilic carbon here and therefore the aromatic group will attack and then we get this particular part where now the aromatic uh, group has attached to the uh, hexamethylene tetramine and of course it re uh, gains the aromaticity and we get this particular molecule. And uh, this molecule which is now basically uh, an ortho substituted uh, amine uh, which will now get uh, reprotonated onto this particular uh, nitrogen atom and uh, we can push this out uh, from here as you can see it here that we can push it out and uh, neutralize the positive charge generating this species which is now having an electrophilic carbon present at this uh, position. And now we have uh, a very uh, kind of vulnerable uh, carbon hydrogen bonds, two of them. One is it is uh, benzylic carbon and second is it is next to the nitrogen and therefore it is ready to undergo a kind of uh, uh, hydride transfer to uh, form the a methyl group here and neutralize the positive charge on the nitrogen and of course you generate this uh, ammonium ion. And uh, this can be hydrolyzed uh, that is what is the next step sulfuric acid uh, in the presence of water hydrolyzes and releases the uh, corresponding aldehyde and of course you can get the, the amine which is released from hexamethylene tetramine. So this is how the mechanism of the transfer of aldehyde occurs onto the aromatic ring system using hexamethylene tetramine. Now if we take this particular amine we get this complex in which we have the configuration here as SS. And if we take uh, this particular amine then of course we have exactly opposite we have this RR configurated uh, oxo manganese complex. Uh, uh, in addition to this particular cyclo cyclic uh, uh, amines uh, these amines also have been employed and they can also be readily prepared um, by kinetic resolution method or many other chemical methods. So again we have two possibilities we have here RR giving us this complex and SS giving us this particular complex. So these are the four different types of OXO complexes that have been employed in the Katsuki Jacobson epoxidation. Of course you can see that substituents could be different like here they have put two methyls and then you have a tertiary butyl but in this case there are tertiary butyl. So one can play with, uh, with the substituents which are present uh, onto the aromatic ring particularly at the ortho and the para position next to uh, compared to the hydroxy group. And uh, these lead to a variety of different uh, possibilities and therefore uh, we can uh, impose uh, steric hindrance or electronic factors into it. Now if we uh, try and look at the um, this particular uh, oxo complex for the epoxidation of uh, simple olefin like this uh, 
then uh, what we see that uh, the epoxidation is uh, possible from four different sites. So if this is the manganese uh, oxo complex which is there, so which is kind of orthogonal, the manganese oxygen bond is orthogonal uh, to the plane of the uh, entire molecule. And uh, then the uh, olefin can attack uh, from either say uh, this side from the top side which is which I have referred as D side or it can be from the B side or it can be from the C side or it can be from the A side. So if uh, this phenyl group here and this phenyl group here they are oppositely uh, oriented one is alpha and the other one is beta. However, when the olefin is trying to come from this side obviously the olefin will have an interaction with this particular phenyl group and also from the back side the phenyl group but particularly this phenyl group will have an interaction. In a similar fashion when uh, from this side when the reaction is occurring then we can see that again the phenyl group will, will have the steric hindrance. And uh, then if we look at from the bottom side uh, from this side attack uh, if we are looking at the uh, approach of the olefin towards the MN double bond O then of course it will also come across two big tertiary butyl groups. So the sites B, C, D are blocked or kind of sterically congested and hindered and therefore the olefins no matter which way you orient it would not uh, approach easily. On the other hand if we look at uh, from the A side, uh, if we look at from this side we see that if we orient the large uh, uh, phenyl group on the other side of the, uh, of the molecule that is on the top side of the molecule and leave the small group towards the uh, lower side of the molecule then we, uh, the approach would not come in uh, the way like for example the phenyl group will not be uh, re putting a steric hindrance. Uh, uh, but since it is going to be alpha oriented therefore it is pointing downward and if we have the hydrogens going down and the phenyl and the methyl is pointing up and then that molecule is approaching towards this manganese double bond O then we do not anticipate uh, any steric hindrance particularly when we have put here the small methyl group. And therefore uh, in that situation when the epoxidation occurs uh, into the plane of the uh, this particular black or board or paper then of course we expect that the epoxidation will give a geometry being like this where the phenyl group is on the top side methyl group is on the lower side uh, of the plane and uh, of course both of them are pointing towards the beta side the hydrogens are pointing alpha side and the uh, epoxidation has occurred into the plane it has transferred the oxygen into the plane. And this so this is the product that we get it which is what is 2S3R uh, that means you have uh, 1, uh, 2 and 3. So you have here 2S uh, and 3R is actually the configuration at the newly formed asymmetric center. So this is uh, something to do with the catalyst that is derived from uh, so this uh, particular uh, chiral amine which is T2 which is also C2 symmetric and it is basically it is uh, uh, it should be like this here and particular diamine. We can also uh, take uh, the other diamine and of course get opposite of the this particular configuration. Now um, if we uh, look at the cyclic uh, amine based complex like for example this particular one here where we have uh, S and S as configurations uh, then we can see how uh, the olefin approaches. Now if we can uh, see the substituents on the aromatic ring. Uh, they have put here two tertiary butyl groups uh, ortho to the OH bond of the, um, of the particular uh, aldehyde uh, which is what is uh, this particular aldehyde 
So if we have the carbon oxygen bond which is a phenolic OH bond next to that uh, tertiary butyl groups are put and para to that R group is put which R group is either tertiary butyl or O triisopropyl. So basically triisopropyl silyl. So you have the OS uh, uh, I uh, isopropyl, isopropyl and isopropyl. So um, we, uh, we can put this bulky substituents uh, uh, around or uh, uh, so that they, uh, they kind of uh, impart a lot of steric hindrance. So we can see now that if the olefin is trying to approach from A side here, then we have the, the tertiary butyl group which is not going to be favoring. Similarly on the B side, the tertiary butyl group will not favor. And of course from the C side we have these tertiary butyl groups not favoring. So from A, B and C sides as we can very clearly see that the tertiary butyl groups which are deliberately put or O tri isopropyl silyl group which is put are specifically because of allowing the blockage of the attachment of the olefin from these three sides. And therefore now what is left is only the top side, uh, the D side where the olefin can approach. Now olefin can orient the way I have shown it here or it can also be oriented uh, in this particular fashion. That means on the phenyl group uh, is put on the right side. So we can have the hydrogen here and of course a double bond here. So we can either have this or we can have this. Now what is found is that uh, this particular hydrogen here in this case is actually beta oriented in an actual fashion. So it is an actually oriented hydrogen and therefore uh, it is assumed that this comes into the way and therefore the olefin tries to orient in this way that the large R group is avoiding this particular hydrogen here. And therefore it goes on the left hand side where the hydrogen is uh, uh, pointing downward. And therefore the epoxidation occurs uh, uh, to give uh, this particular uh, epoxide where the uh, phenyl group is on the left hand side, methyl group is on the right hand side. And uh, that particular uh, epoxide is having 2R3S configuration. If we want exactly opposite of that to happen then of course we can take the, the, um, the in, in place of this we can take the corresponding R configurated uh, amine we can take it. Now what exactly is the mechanism in brief uh, basically we are starting with this uh, uh, manganese 3 uh, complex and oxidized during the process. Uh, say for example using uh, uh, this particular PHIO as an oxidant. So the manganese 3 gets uh, converted to the corresponding manganese 5 oxo complex. In the process uh, we release uh, iodobenzene and the double bond gets epoxidized to the corresponding uh, oxirane or the epoxide. And of course we release the manganese 3 in the process which is again reoxidized to the corresponding um, manganese oxo complex. Now uh, what is the explanation for uh, such a uh, uh, reaction? Uh, Jacobson has a slightly different view uh, than the Kotsuki but both of them arrive at the same uh, conclusion. For example Jacobson says that as I did mention earlier that this particular hydrogen which is actually oriented does not allow the R large group that is the larger substituent on the right hand side. Therefore the smaller substituent uh, is kept on the right side and the large substituent goes on the left hand side to avoid the interaction uh, with this particular hydrogen which is beta oriented here and alpha oriented here. So on the other hand Katsuki uh, says that the approach of the olefin is uh, towards the imine so that there is a pi pi interaction and uh, 
pi pi interaction uh, is such that um, that allows the uh, olefin to be closer to the uh, oxo complex. But during the process what is seen that the large tertiary group here uh, kind of repels the um, larger substituent on the other side like this. So eventually uh, this uh, uh, the result of the epoxidation is the same and in, uh, irrespective of uh, which way one looks at it uh, whether it is through the uh, pi pi interaction of the olefin and the imine or is it because of the double bond trying to avoid the actual hydrogen of the cyclohexyl uh, 1 2 diamine. Uh, it, it gives the same uh, uh, epoxidation and as you can see that uh, with SS this is what the situation is and with RR uh, complexes we see that the uh, RL group the large group in both the cases Jacobs and as well as Katsuki case uh, avoids the hydrogen and orients to the right hand side that means wherever there is a hydrogen which is not axial towards that side the large group goes uh, and the smaller group goes on the side when there is a hydrogen which is actually oriented. So we will uh, stop it at this uh, stage uh, today and look at uh, other aspects of this Katsuki Jacobson epoxidation in our next class. Till then you can uh, go through this whatever I have told and bye and thank you for today's class.